murdered by her own grandfather, the innocent Tia Sharp. But what secrets does the man she called Granddad hide? On the 3rd of August 2012, a family in New Addington, South London, had reported their little girl missing. Tia Sharp was a 12-year-old girl who lived in New Addington, London. She was a bright and bubbly girl who loved to dance and sing. She was also a good student and was doing well in her school work. Her father, Steve, who was estranged from her mother, was living in Northampton. I got a phone call from Tia's uncle at the time. And he said to me, he said, I don't want to alarm you, but Tia's gone missing. Tia's parents, Stephen and Natalie, separated when she was just a baby. Despite their separation, Tia's family remained close-knit, residing in Croydon, South London. She shared a deep bond with her maternal grandmother, Christine Bicknell, and considered her both a friend and family. Tia's affection for her mother was reciprocated, and they were inseparable. Christine met Hazel in 2002, when she worked as a barmaid in a pub in Rains Park, southwest London. In 2007, Christine, Tia's grandmother, entered into a relationship with a man named Stuart Hazel. Hazel was was 10 years her junior, moved in with Christine, and became part of the tight-knit family. Tia had a good bond with Hazel, and even called him granddad, as did her two younger brothers. However, unbeknownst to Tia and her family, Hazel harbored dark and sinister thoughts. It's June 2012, and Tia is celebrating her birthday with her mom and grandmother. But she wants someone else there too. Hazel. On Tia's birthday in June 2012, she celebrated with her mother and grandmother, highlighting the close bond they shared. Little did they know that this would be one of the last joyous moments together. Natalie got a text from 37-year-old Stuart, inviting Tia to stay over for the weekend. Tia headed over, met up with Stuart, and they headed off shopping. After doing their bits and pieces, they went back home to Stuart and Christine's. Christine, who was working the night shift at a care home, gave them a call that evening and everything seemed Hunky dory. Moving forward to the weekend of August 2nd, when Stuart sent a text message to Natalie inviting Tia to spend the weekend at his place. Tia accepted the invitation and went to meet Stuart. They decided to go shopping together before returning to Stuart and Christine's residence. It's worth mentioning that Christine, who worked the night shift at a care home, contacted them that evening and everything seemed to be going smoothly. I was confident with her being there with him on her own. I, I had not. If I had any issues, it wouldn't have happened. But I had no issues. I had no, Natalie had no problems. It was normal. There weren't no reason to think anything different. The following day, Tia's grandmother returned home and found Tia missing. And they asked me stupid questions yesterday. Like, oh, did you do anything? I said, well, no, I didn't. Excuse my language, but no, I didn't. I'd never think of that. I'd love to. It's a bitch. She's like my own daughter, for God's sake. We had that sort of relationship. It was that sort of thing. It was just, you know, she wanted it. She got it. She's got, no, she's got a lovely, loving home, she's, she's never gone without anything, so I can't work it out what the hell's going on. The police launched a search for Tia. They searched her grandmother's home and the surrounding area. They also appealed for the public's help in finding Tia. The story of the missing 12-year-old spreads like wildfire, with major news outlets picking up on the story. The word about Tia's disappearance spread rapidly, gripping the hearts of the local community and the news channels. The search for Tia broadened, with police, volunteers, and concerned citizens joining forces in a desperate desperate effort to bring her home safely. And we are doing everything we can, everything we possibly can to find her and trying to support the family at this time. And over the last three days or so, that has meant more than 100 extra uniform officers in the Croydon and Mitcham areas. There are over 80 officers working on this case, 40 of them detectives, 40 of them specialist search officers. We've collected more than 800 hours so far of CCTV footage from buses, from trams, and we've viewed more than 120 hours of that CCTV in live time. Despite tirelessly examining 800 hours of CCTV footage and following up on 55 sightings reported by the public, the police did not make any progress in locating Tia's body. Obviously, you, you want to find her, but then you're concerned of how you'll find her and what, what what the situation will be if you did find her. Numerous individuals came forward with potential sightings showing the community's strong support. However, despite these intensive efforts, Tia's whereabouts remained unknown. He would have been feeling the pressure at this point though. He knows there's a body in the loft and it's going to be decomposing. So he's going to be thinking, how is he going to remove that body? On the morning of Friday, the 10th of August, a week after Tia was reported missing, Hazel wakes up early and leaves the house. Friday morning I got up and the smell was really intense. Um, once again I, I was looking and I just couldn't find it and I, I was pulling everything out but I just could not find the smell. 
And then when the police turned up, and that's when they just said to me, can we leave the house? They had located the body of 12-year-old Tia Sharp. Her naked body had been wrapped in garbage bags and sheets and placed under bags and debris between the loft rafters. On August 10, 2012, a week after Tia had been reported missing, the police found her body in the loft of her grandmother's home. There was a, a part of the elasticated bed sheet visible, um, which I moved and uh, found a part of a, a human foot. Uh, clearly decomposing. Upon examining the body, police could clearly see that Tia had been sexually assaulted and suffocated. One look at Stuart Hazel would rouse anyone's suspicions, though. He was only 37, but he looked like someone you would see in a poster warning kids away from drug abuse. And with his mile-long rap sheet of convictions, he was the last human being most people would entrust with their children. Immediately, the spotlight of suspicion turned on to Stuart Hazel, Tia's step-grandfather, a man who until that moment had stood shoulder to shoulder with Tia's family, pleading for a safe return. Do you feel under pressure? Do you feel that, that perhaps the, the people are looking at you? Well, if they believe what they read in the papers, they can do whatever they like. Because I know deep down in my heart that Tia walked out of my house. And I think he was struggling at times, sometimes, to be able to remember what he necessarily said to everybody else. And of course, the more detail I asked of him, the more difficult it became for him to remember exactly what he'd said. Because what he couldn't do, of course, was give me something that he'd given to somebody else differently. Hazel, with a questionable past of his own, suddenly became the prime suspect in a case that had turned from a disappearance into a murder. And we don't know the circumstances exactly in which he was arrested, but he was pretty quickly arrested. As the investigation unfolded, details emerged that painted a chilling picture of Hazel's true nature. He was no stranger to the law, having a history of violence and drug-related offenses, and had a lengthy criminal history with 30 prior convictions and three prison terms. His offenses included drug-related crimes, burglary, theft, and instances of violence, including racially motivated incidents. I know he had a criminal record. I know he... I know he drunk. I know he smoked weed, but I didn't know the extent. And... Um, but as I said to him, what he'd done in his past before we met, that, that was nothing to do with me. Hazel's background also revealed a pattern of chronic substance abuse involving both drugs and alcohol. On the inside of a cupboard door, above head height, was a memory card for a digital camera. We recovered deleted images from that card that were quite disturbing. There was some where clearly he had searched the internet and found pictures of girls that were not dissimilar looking to Tia. Police found explicit images of Tia on Hazel's mobile phone. His internet history was filled with searches for explicit content involving minors. This was the damning evidence that sealed his fate. The police arrested Stuart Hazel and charged him with Tia's murder. On May 7, 2013, Stuart Hazel pled not guilty to the charge of murdering Tia Sharp. He claimed that he and Tia had been playing together when Tia had fallen down the stairs. The jury came in and he asked that the indictment, the charge, be put to Stuart Hazel again, the murder charge uh, of Tia Sharp. At that point, it was put to him again. There was a pause as he stood in the dock. He then said, guilty. Tia's murder had a profound impact on her family and friends. Her father, Stephen Carter, spoke out about the pain and grief he had felt since Tia's death. Additionally, in that same year, he expressed his support for a plan aimed at enhancing internet safety. In July 2013, her father, Stephen Carter, said he backed a plan for websites to block certain search terms and warn people when they try and view illegal content. Amidst his sore, he also called for stricter sentencing for individuals convicted of crimes against children, emphasizing the need for justice and protection for young lives. For people like him, for what he's done, they shouldn't be allowed to write to their parents that I'm looking at 15 to 18 years. This was the chilling tale of Tia Sharp, leaving us to reflect on trust turned tragedy. He's taken something so precious away from me and my family. I've had to become a stronger man for my family. 
and take everything on my shoulders and do everything for them. Represent Tia and show the world she was a beautiful, loving daughter.